My next guest is director of the Center for Election Integrity at the America First Policy Institute. He served as principal deputy press secretary in the Trump administration. You probably saw him on television many times. And once upon a time, this guy actually worked for me when I served as governor of Arkansas. A very dear friend, would you please welcome to the show, Hogan Gidley. Great having you here. Always good to see you. First things first, happy birthday. Thank you very much. I'm so glad that, that you're celebrating this milestone. Also, another milestone coming up. You will be forever known as the best governor in the history of the state of Arkansas for about two more months. Watch it. Watch it. And You'll then, never get invited back. Be never get invited back. All right. It's okay. Sean Hannity tells me that every time That's I right. see him. He's right. And it's okay. I hope she is better than me. Yeah. I really well, do. She, she learned from the best, and she's doing it the right way. Well, she's working hard at it. But, you know, we all worry about not so much who gets elected, but how do they get elected? Right. Are the elections going to be fair? I had someone ask me yesterday, can I trust the election process? Is it going to be okay? What do you tell people like that? Well, the good news is it's getting better. I think people understand that for decades in this country, we've been faced with issues of irregularities, illegalities, anomalies, and yes, fraud. Um, and at the Center for Election Integrity, we're trying to make it easy to vote, but hard to cheat. Mm -hmm. And as you know, the, state, uh, the Constitution of this country um, gives that right and responsibility over to state legislatures to figure out uh, the time, place, and manner of elections. And in the 2020 cycle, and the 2016 cycle, we saw people on the right and the left They've been complaining about this for so long, yeah. Governor, and they, they refuse to do something about it once they win, because then they all say the election was fine. Yeah. But we know good and well that um, one of the biggest problems in this, in this uh, country is that people have lost that faith, trust, and confidence in the process. And so we're working with state legislatures to pass good laws, and we've had a lot of victories in states like Pennsylvania and states like Missouri, yeah. turning around their laws, uh, and doing several things that really help instill that confidence back in the process. So there's more happening on the front end where it has to happen, because once the election is over, it's almost impossible to do anything about it. Even, even if you could say, well, we found evidences of fraud, doesn't matter. You just about can't undo it once it's done. One of the things we did when we were working in a small project in Virginia, for example, we realized too, if you could stop those votes from being cast and put them in that provisional pile, Ooh, you could win a lot more court challenges that way because the signatures didn't match or the address was wrong or 25 people were registered in one P.O. box. So you knew there were problems. Mm. So it's all about stopping them on the front end, which the laws will do. But as you remember in 2020, a lot of these states just ignored their laws. You had rogue governors yeah. and secretaries of state, and attorneys general, just saying, no, we're gonna just ignore the law and do it this certain way, not going through the legislatures. We're trying to have a return to normalcy and beef up some of those laws in these states. Will there be like an army of attorneys watching problem poll places that historically have had issues? I sure hope so. You remember in, um, in Arkansas, we used to joke that if you, you didn't win the cemetery vote, you weren't even gonna win an Absolutely. election, no question. Yeah. In fact, as I, I give speeches all over the country, and, and one person came up to me and said, I was so angry when I found out that my parents had voted for Joe Biden, I swore I would never visit their gravesite ever again. <laughs> I wasn't gonna put flowers out or anything. Uh, you know, but like in a state like Michigan, uh, the Public Interest Legal Foundation, a group we're partnering with, they found 25,000 dead people's on, on the roll, people on the roll in Michigan. 5,000 of which had been there for 15 years. Wow. So this is a systemic problem across the country. I think though the light is being shed on it. And look, the left hates transparency. So whether it's teaching critical race theory in school or transing our kindergartners, they don't want light shed on everything or FBI raids uh, on a certain former president. So as we start to get these things out in the light, it really makes people understand. And by the way, regardless of what the media says, this is so popular on the right and the left. 85% of people in this country want photo identification, not voter identification, yeah. photo identification. I don't understand why anybody would be against that. Right. We have to use it for everything we do. Everything else, proving you are who you say you are. But there are examples where the elections really turn out okay. Florida in 2000 was a disaster. Sure. That's where the Bush-Gore thing all came down to, and everyone knew that Florida's election laws were a mess. To the credit of Jeb Bush, he went to his legislature, they came up with a system, 
You know, Florida is one of the biggest states in the country. The entire election was settled by 10 o'clock no on question. election night, and there were no controversies, none, about right. the results. Every state could do that if they wanted to. They could, and Florida learned from their past. So remember the, the dimpled chads and the hanging ballot, yeah. the hanging chads, dimpled ballots? That's been replaced with mass mail-in and drop boxes. So it's still a problem. The left obviously complaining about 2016. Remember, it was your patriotic duty to question the outcome of 2016. If you yeah. didn't, you were working with Vladimir Putin. You were a Russian stooge, yeah. for heaven's sakes. Now in 2020, you say, hey, wait a minute. I went to vote, and they said someone else had already voted for me. And they're like, insurrectionist. You should go to jail. The whole thing is turned on its head and insane. But states like Florida have led the way. Even DeSantis did something really recently and found 20 or so people committing fraud and has some fraud task force that puts them in jail. I mean, this is what you have to do because, look, the left will say there's not enough fraud to overturn an election, not enough illegality to overturn an election. One illegal or miscounted vote is one too many in this country because it's theft. Yeah. It takes away someone's legitimate vote. And what we have to do is work in these states to protect every legal vote and every legal voter. And I know we can do it. I loved what you said, make it easier to vote and harder to cheat. Hogan Gidley, thank you very much for being here. You can check out more from Hogan on social media and you should. You can follow the links that we've got for you at Huckabee.tv.